Hello and welcome. Today's show is all about dressing your windows. And I will talk about privacy and light control, and of course, all the pretties to soften the edges. I'm your host and designer, Susan Sage, and this is Designing with Casual Elegance. So the place I am going to start with talking about privacy and light control. And I am focusing mainly on these two window treatments behind me. I call them hard window treatments because these are what give you privacy and control the light, heat, and cold coming in. Usually you have some type of a hard window treatment before you start dressing with all of the fabrics, doing balances, draperies, um, you know, whatever you little heart desires. So first of all, I'm going to talk about the woven woods. And the reason I like woven woods, they do allow light to filter in. And, you know, they don't completely block out unless you do a privacy liner. So I'm going to talk about some of the options that you have with the woven woods. What this one does, it drops from the top, so you can let as much sun in as you want. But it also raises up from the bottom. Great features. Uh, there is a decorative balance, which you'll see in the second half of the show. And with that, we do have little returns to cover all the hardware. The other thing that you need to know about the woven woods, I don't know if any of you remember when Pier 1 would carry woven woods and they'd fall apart and they were just bamboo. Well, we have solutions to all that now. They've come a long way. And one of the things to do is to add tapes down the edges. This will definitely increase the life and use of your woven woods. A uh, nice, versatile treatment, a uh, little bit more casual than perhaps a luminette or a vignette, which uses sheer fabrics or soft fabrics to cover your windows. So I always like to start with something that not only looks good, it could stand on its own, but of course, being a designer, I have to add soft window treatments um, on my windows. So. With the woven woods, like I said, they have the cloth tapes that does protect. And we have a picture of woven woods raised from the bottom with a soft valance um, as the top treatment. And this is just nice and easy. As you can see, you can let the light in from the bottom. And then we have French doors in that same room. And the French doors have stationary drapes and you can see that the woven woods are dropped down from the top. So, you know, just kind of fun. Um, can use them in many different rooms. Just a great option for keeping out that heat and light. And when it comes to heat or cold, just having something on your windows, even if it's an open blind, will affect your energy efficiency by 10%, improving it and definitely cutting down on the use of the air conditioner, the heater. Like I said, it's all about options and the customization. Uh, there are many different colors, many different weaves that you can get. You can get a white, you can get gray, pretty much whatever you want. And then you can pick whatever cloth tape will complement that particular woven wood. So that is really one of my favorites. Uh, I know we also have a lot of people are going to roller shades. The thing about roller shades or duets, uh, pleated shades, they're either up or down as far as your light control. And I really like to be able to see outside when I'm at home, I want those blinds open and feel like I'm part of nature. Just one of those things. Now, the other thing that we have here, of course, are wood blinds. And the wood blinds, these are actually real wood. And the reason I like real wood, first of all, they're very lightweight. If you get a faux wood, they are made of plastic, and they're very heavy. 
they are not made to raise and lower every day and open your window, windows. And then, of course, there's the composite, which is the halfway in between. Uh, the other feature of the wood blinds, you can raise them up. You will have a stack back. They can only go so far. But wood blinds versus faux wood blinds, these slats are thinner. Um, another advantage to wood over faux wood or a composite, wood's a natural product. Therefore, it is cellulosic. It has all these tiny little air pockets in it. And that allows it to be a very good insulator. Again, controlling your heat or cold that may come through your window. I mean, we'd love to all have perfect windows with no draft in my dreams, really. So the other thing I like about blinds, you can tilt them up. And what this does is reflect the sun and the heat back out. Or if I can reach it, we can, you can tilt them down to let sunlight in. Say the middle of winter, it's a beautiful sunny day. Let it come in and help heat up that room or that space. And of course, your blinds come in many different colors. Uh, even, you can even get faux woods in a color stain. So, you know, it's like the choices are limitless. The other thing you can see, I have an exposed headrail up here. And the reason I did that, it does have a beautiful balance. But to show you the returns, if you have a blind that is outside mount or half outside mount, you're going to see the hardware if you don't have a return on your valance. Uh, the same thing with drapes, and we'll talk about that later. But that is one of the nice things. You can get decorative valances. It doesn't have to be the standard one. You can upgrade. The other thing are these cloth tapes. Many advantages to having cloth tapes on your blinds. First of all, it customizes, it personalizes. You can coordinate it with your room, the way that it's decorated. That's number one. The second thing is you have strings behind this. And it covers up those strings. Now, some people may not worry about that. But the other, uh, with those strings, you also have route holes. And the route holes allow sun to leak through. So it doesn't darken your room completely. So there again, cloth tapes eliminate that. Now, you can do routeless blinds, um, but you're still going to see the strings. You know, but that's a personal decision of which direction you would like to go. Uh, there are many companies out there who do wood blinds, and they do have cordless where you can just lift it up, pull it down, which is great. I don't mind the cords. I like to be able to control my tilt and my raising and lowering. Um, I actually put my blinds up quite a bit and open my windows. So I'm going to talk a little bit about shutters. I don't have samples, but shutters, beautiful treatment. I know that people love them. Makes it very hard to do draperies or valances with a shutter. Reason being, if you do want to open your windows, you have to open the entire shutter out into the room, which takes up space. Um, and because of the way they're made, they have a frame around them. So it does block a lot more light than what you might want. And also, if you open it up, open your window, and then close it, and even keep your slats open, it's still not going to allow a full breeze to come through. But there again, the look is beautiful. Um, I like them best for stationary windows. Like if you've got second story windows or way up high, like a 15 or 18 foot ceiling in your living room or family room, and you're getting a lot of sunlight, perfect application for a shutter. And they can just remain stationary. But of course, just like everything else, you can get motorized. So you don't have to worry about climbing up and adjusting 
all of those different slats to get it just right. So you know shutters, yes, they're great. We then have roller shades, which I mentioned earlier. They're up or down, but this is a big thing right now because of the clean look and we've been so minimalist that um, people have just moved to these shades because it goes up into a small head rail. The same thing with a pleated shade or a duet. Uh, duets made by Hunter Douglas. They do have, it looks like a pleated shade, but it really isn't. Um, I am going to go back to talk about the woven wood. You can get a privacy liner if you are getting a lot of light, or let's say it's on a first floor in a family room facing the street. You can have a privacy liner as long as you don't do the top down. There is not a way to affix the liner. Even though it can operate independently, uh, that is one of the options where you actually have two head rails behind your valance. And if you want, you could drop the privacy liner when it's really sunny out or at night, you know, if you're sitting in the room and you're watching TV. You can raise it, you can lower it, uh, but you don't want people looking in from the street. So privacy liners are important. You can get those in the other forms that I've talked about also, like the Duet. Uh, there are pretty window treatments, the luminettes and the silhouettes that use a sheer fabric with the vein of a vertical blind. And we, I'm sure we all remember those. They have been around a long time and everybody always put them on their patio doors because there were no other options. Well, today you can do shutters, you can do blinds, you can do the woven woods, the duets, the, you know, whatever you want. We are not limited. We are so lucky today to be where we are, we're at and the choices that we have, you know. Um, like I said, the woven woods, blinds, those are my two favorite. And the other thing on blinds, this is just a two inch, but they do come two and a half inch. They also come in one inch. The two and a half inch does allow more light. And of course you have more space in between each slat. You get down to the one inch and there are actually everybody thinks, oh, I'll save money and do one inch slats. Well, no, because you have twice as many. You have to, <laughs> add all these teeny little slats in order to fill that window. So uh, my favorite is the two and a half and sometimes they can look like a shutter because of the wider slats. Um, two inch is pretty standard. That's what you mostly see. They all work. Um, and like I said, I like to raise mine up. I don't think I can do this one, maybe, oh yeah. And you can see that's very lightweight and went up very easy. So that's blinds, woven woods, roller shades, your hard window treatments. Give you the light, the privacy that you need before you can do all of the pretties. And let's face it, we all like pretty and um, I'm always going to add something, like I said. If there is anything that I, I'm going to be real honest, I'm just not a fan of shutters. You know, I'm talking about them, I'm explaining. Like I said, I don't have a sample. Um, I think they're great for fixed windows. The other thing you will see in shutters is people will put them on a cottage window that has divided lights or mullions. Well, you've got first all of these dividers, and then you have all these slats behind it. Uh, gets very busy. So, like I said, it is one of those things that make your choices. Go look at all the samples. Home Depot, Lowe's all have these things on display. So anyway, we're going to take a short break, and when we come back, we are going to talk about the soft window treatments that are here.
Hi, and welcome back. We talked about hard window treatments for privacy and light control. There is one other thing I did want to share with you, and that is if you move into a space or a house without anything on the windows, no need to fret because you can get paper shades at Home Depot or Lowe's. They have a sticky back. I've used these many times, so now I just put them up with painter's tape if I want to take my window treatments down to paint a wall or trim. They also have, I call them little clothes pins, so that you can raise them up, still let light in, and clip them off. So just another way that you still have privacy until your real window treatments are made, you know, they're all custom made, but it will fill the bill until that time comes. The next thing I'm gonna talk about are the soft window treatments. And the very first one, this little valance, that was up above the woven woods. This is a beautiful Tebow fabric, it is cotton. It's fairly heavy, so you don't wanna do anything really ornate with it. Um, it has a lot of beautiful colors in it. You could color scheme your whole house from this fabric. The things that I'm gonna point out, this is just a flat balance, pleated at the corner, and you could have done a contrast color in the pleat. I opted not to, there's a lot going on in this room already. Instead, I wanted a contrast welt cord, and it's kind of hard to see but there is a little welt cord going around the edge, and then that same fabric is used for the dust cover. Dust covers are very important. There's raw wood under here. This is a board mount treatment. So you wanna make sure that you don't have dust just sticking to it. So much easier to dust it by having the dust cap on. It is fully lined and of course, the board is covered on the back. So this is just a beautifully custom-made window treatment. It is put up using, some people will say, L brackets, corner brackets, angle irons, just little angle irons. And I don't know if you can, maybe if I hold it down here. It's just a little L shape, goes into the wall. And there you go. Very simple. So just another option for softening those hard edges. And I'm gonna move on to this lovely cafe drapery. Now this can be, actually was a cafe treatment in my old house. In this house it actually works as a laundry room treatment because I have a small window up there. The other thing I'm gonna talk about is this particular hardware. It's very casual. So, you know, nothing decorative like the finials and brackets that we have with the long drape up top. This curves back to the wall. So your return is built into the hardware, meaning that you don't have a separate little nail to get your drape all the way back and prevent light leak. You know, I keep bringing that up, but Anytime that sun or heat is coming in, it does affect your energy efficiency. This is a very simple pleat. Um, I call it a French pleat. I would call it a two-finger pleat. And I'm gonna explain different pleats. I have my cheater drape here. And if you were wanting draperies, this has been a great help. This very first one is the French pleat. It is just a two finger pleat. It is tacked at the top. It is still stitched down at the back to help that pleat maintain its shape. Our second pleat here is a traditional pinch pleat. Uh, pinch pleat. And it is your traditional three pleat, stitched down the back, but it is tacked at the bottom, not the top. And this is the same thing, just a four pleat. This, if you can see it, is a box pleat. You don't see those too much anymore. Uh, you used to. A French pleat that's a three finger. And then goblet pleats. Oh, I'm sure there are people who remember this. You used to stuff tissue paper into them 
and then put a button on it as a nice little decorative touch. So those are just some samples of the different types of pleats we're using in draperies. The other thing I'm going to explain is lining. This particular drape has an inner lining, which is a flannel, and a regular lining. Good news, we don't have to do that anymore. Right now, for home decor, we have linings that are flannel backed, we have thermal linings, we have blackout linings. And I'll tell you what, I have thermal linings, oh, probably on all of my window treatments. And what I like about the thermal lining, it does also black out. If you work at night and you sleep during the day, it really helps seal out all the light and you can get some real good rest. So sticking with a nice thermal lining, it is heavier than a regular lining, but great advantages. Um, and when you are doing a window treatment rod and rings, people always thought that the rings were stitched onto the fabric. They are not. It is much more cost effective to have a hook set and to hook right into your rings. The other thing I'll say about draperies, if you like to open them, it's a good idea to have a wand. It just hooks into your last ring so that you can just push your drapes open. That keeps the oil from your hands from getting on the drapes. Not only that, over time, using your hand will affect the way that your drapery hangs. Um, it will become out of shape. You have to take it down, iron it back, and hang it back up again. So um, just love a nice pleated drape. It stays, keeps its shape, and very easy. The other drapery I have here, this is a beautiful silk drapery. And the feature here is the contrast banding on the leading edge. Now, this particular drape is on a rod with finials and brackets. And it is a flat panel, which means it does not have a return like this drapery, this would return to the wall. And even on this little balance, you saw the return back to the wall. A, a sheared on drape is not going to have that. It's going to end at the bracket, um, unless you're gonna cut a hole and try and return it to the wall. But instead, I like to just leave it. And I think we all know what these little command strips are. If you take a command strip, take it apart, stick it on the side of your window trim and attach the fabric to it, takes care of the problem, and you don't even know that it is there doing its job. So again, little tricks that we are always finding. This is actually one from a pair of drapes. Um, it's on a small window, so I just use a single drape. And there is a tie back holder here. Just like to keep it tied back. Again, open the blinds, let some light come in. The next thing I'm gonna talk about is this lovely little balance. This is a shaped balance. And here, instead of doing any contrast, the fabric itself is the dust cover. Again, it is covered on the back. It has a nice lining. And the wonderful thing about this particular shade, you'll see all these little rings going down the side, which is what gives us our shape here, our little wings. These all have to be hand stitched on. So if you ever wonder why a Roman shade is so expensive, um, if they are being custom made, they have to stitch all of these little rings by hand. The other thing that this has is a stabilizer bar and it also is covered with fabric that helps it keep its shape. 
you can change the length of this. You've got extra string, you could raise it up, or you could let it down. So again, lovely little window treatment. And I believe we have a before and after of the room that this has come in. There you can see the wall is very plain, just a window, no warmth, no coziness. And then you add the window treatment, you have a whole different look and feel. It's just one of those things, window treatments are that finishing touch, that jewelry in your home that really shows your personality, your character, and personalizes it, just like the hard window treatments that you select. Uh, a lot of people do like the roller shades or pleated shades. If that's what you want, then that's showing your personality, your custom look. But, um, so anyway, these are little balances, more jewelry, more personalization for your home. Um, and there is a variety of balances. You can do all kinds of shapes. We now have, I think, one more picture. And what I'm gonna talk about here is, this is a sheer drapery. It, it is embroidered. And what I love about shears are the ethereal quality that they have. So I like my shears unlined. There are people who probably prefer to have them lined which is great, we'll do whatever you want. And then of course that had a beautiful scalloped valance on the top going across the window and you saw there were cloth tapes on that blind also. So the valance is just a scallop valance and that fabric is an embroidered fabric. Um, again, just nice softness and you can see how the valance returns back to the wall. So, and that blind um, actually is a full inside mount, so none of it sticks out into the room. Um, you know, so wonderful way, you don't see as many full window treatments like that as in, anymore. People use just a lot of stationary panels, or they are going back to balances. But the big incoming thing that we are now going through is the return to pretty. And you will see in magazines, books, more soft fabrics, in pillows, uh, window treatments, wallpapers, adding the pretty back into your home. We have been minimalist and gray and white, black and white for so long, uh, people are changing. They, we're humans, that is our nature. Eight to 10 years, we're ready for a new look. So what I'm going to do now is create a nice little reading nook and just give you an idea of how we these window treatments really can warm up a space so the first thing i'm going to do is take our lamp and we'll just set that and of course if we're going to be reading you got to have books. Little accessories, all very important. There is a nice basket down below. And some little photos. And then, of course, we need to have a chair. So we will bring in our cozy chair. And of course, it may be a cool evening or it might get chilly. So need to add a throw. And then, of course, more finishing touches. And if you're really extravagant, 
go for two pillows. Why not? Now, nice little cozy nook to go ahead and curl up with a good book and get that out of the way. Would be a lot of fun. So I want to thank everybody for tuning in today and hope that this was beneficial or that you learned something. I really like to share product knowledge with my clients and I do hope that you will join me next month. We are going to be decorating for fall. So thank you. Bye.